Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today, you're stuck with me, folks. We're going to play around with some green sock. Um, so I've done a couple episodes on green sock in the past, and we're going to find out how much of that I remember. My guess is not much. So this is probably going to be a fun day of watching me be bad at things. Uh, I know that for some of you, that is a good time. So strap in. Let's get ready. Um, so what I what I want to do today specifically is I am working on something um, to troll Sarah Drasner uh, is really the the short version. Um, I'm going to uh, animate a a smash burger, um, which is the superior burger, and I want to do a, uh, a kind of a diagram of it. So I'll I'll show you the artwork that I've got. Um, <laughs> but uh but yeah so what we're gonna do is is i've got the uh, the ver the burger like this and then i've got one where the ingredients are kind of like expanded so you can diagram it and i want to show how to make a, a smash burger this is actually I'm, I'm joking about trolling sarah this is something that i've wanted to do for a while which is kind of make a, a in the the eventual end goal here is i'd like this to be kind of a scrolly telling like why i make burgers the way i do and and how you can make them yourself um, so we're going to see if we can make that work today. I want to, uh, I want to see how far we can go. So, um, <laughs> everything can be a burger if you believe that is a fact. Uh, and, and what's up everybody? How are you? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for hanging out. I am, uh, I'm very excited about today. So let's, let's, you know what? I could, I could probably sit here and, and chat without doing anything for quite a while, but why don't we just jump right over into the stream view and we'll do uh we'll do a bunch of coding today so um as always we've got live captioning going on we've got diane here with us today thank you diane for for helping with the captioning you can see that on the home page of learnwithjason.dev um so if you can head over there see those live captions they're they're happening as we speak um that's from white coat captioning and that's made possible through the support of our sponsors netlify fauna auth zero and hasura all kicking in to make the show more accessible to more people which i very much appreciate um and you know while you're checking out that homepage, remember these are all clickable go give them a clicky um so uh what we're going to do today is we're going to play with green sock which i mostly i kind of remember how it works i'm uh we've had Let's actually, we should go find this. Let's, let's find, we've had, um, green sock. All right. So we've got one from Jay. We've got one from Cassie. We've got one from, better look up GSAP. Uh, where's the animation one with Sarah? She did one too. There it is. Uh, so this, yeah, so we've got the the recent one with Jay. We've got the episode with Cassie, uh, where we went and did a bunch of interactive stuff, which was super fun. And then we had a tuning session with Sarah, where we learned a whole bunch of really cool stuff about uh, how to make animations feel more professional. I'm going to fall very short of this episode. So uh, <laughs> if you if you see what I'm doing and you're like, wow, that could be a lot better. Yeah, go watch this one and, and you'll see how. <laughs> um, but what I want to do today is I want to play with Green Sock specifically. Uh, Green Sock is a very uh, well-known library for uh, for running like animations. It's known as GSAP. You've probably seen that a well uh, around as well. Um, but you can do, look at all this cool stuff that people are doing. Like you can, here's this, like that's all SVG. Um, and that's why I think this is so exciting is that you can do really, really interesting things. Like the WebGL stuff is, is, I haven't done anything with that. Um, someday I will. It's very cool. Uh, you can do canvas stuff. I've done a little bit of canvas stuff. Uh, it's very, very fun. Um, my most over-engineered thing that I've ever created is if you look down, let's see if I can do this. If you look down at the very bottom left of the screen behind the Learn with Jason logo, there is a tiny little animation there of a bunch of circles kind of moving slowly and fading in and out. I'm not going to tell you how long I spent figuring out how to make that work, but that's a canvas animation uh, that no one's ever noticed. So that's how I spend my time. Um, 
What's up, TypeScript Tea Time? Thank you for uh, for hanging out. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, Xander, I don't even know what R3F is. What uh, what what is that? Um. Oh wait, hold on. What React Three Fiber? Yeah. Oh wait, we got React Three Fiber. We did one. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Let's find React Fiber. Yeah, here we go. This is a fun episode too. You should go check this one out. Um. There you go. Go check that out. Uh, yeah, we had Paul on. We built a like a cool 3D thing. Like, look at look at this thing that we were able to build. It's like a rocket. How cool is that? Anyways, this was fun. This is all built in React. It's amazing. You should go definitely check that out. Um, but yeah. So let's uh, let's let's dig into this into what we're actually trying to do today. So I'm going to show you uh, an animation that I did. This one is done with um, CSS. Right, so this is an SVG, and I did some CSS stuff, uh, and then this, so there's, I'll show you what we did. There's a little bit of JavaScript here that basically just removes and re-adds the, the animation so that when I click, it starts the animation over again. Um, and then here, there is uh, some like basic setup stuff, but we don't care about that, so instead we're going to focus on the... Um, the SVG. So there's this SVG for the Burger Champ. That's the whole thing, right? It's uh, like, here's the outline, here's the circle. I spent a bunch of time naming things in here so we can see which spatula it is. There's the the burger. Um, and then all the definitions, and these are like the actual paths that make those shapes. So the the cool thing here is that we've got the defs down here, but then I can, I can just kind of set in, here's my spatula. Uh, here's my left spatula, and here's the burger, and then I can animate those things by going in and targeting like here's the burger, and on the burger I'm going to use this burger drop animation, and that burger drop animation is here. So you know this is this is kind of like the first the first approach is let's do some some animation with CSS. I know CSS, I'm comfortable with it, um, so it's not like daunting for me to start. Uh, GSAP is a little less familiar. It's a, an API I don't know very well, and, and there's a bunch of stuff that you can do in GSAP that I don't know. I, I don't even know what the names are for things, so I, it's harder for me to Google, and that makes me uh, more hesitant to do it. Like with, with CSS, I'm like, okay, I, I know enough CSS that I can, I know what to, I know what to look for, at least. Like, I know that the animation property exists, and I know that transforms exist and I've gotten feedback from from pros that are like oh yeah if you want to do like the most performant thing you should be doing stuff like I'm totally not doing some of that stuff like I should be using the translate or what is it the transform 3d so that it uses the GPU which I'm not doing so there's there's stuff that I could do in here to make this even more performant but you know as a as a first attempt this is kind of fun right you make that with uh you do that with the internet look at that look at that burger with the internet um so uh so yeah this is this is good stuff and yeah okay so what i want to do today though is i want to play with this this is um so here is an updated version of that this is my my smash burger the way that i make it and i wanted to do a uh so the, the actual illustration of it and then i wanted to get into a diagram so this is the um the actual way that I make my smash burgers when I cook them myself. So, you know, we, we start with a potato bun. Uh, I make my own burger sauce because that's the kind of person I am. I've got dill pickles that go on the top. Um, I make, I grind my own, my own ground beef because again, it's who I am. Um, use American cheese because American cheese is the secret to a good smash burger. Put some red onions on the bottom patty between the cheese and the burger to uh, soak up some of that juice and, and give yourself like a, Partially fresh, partially sautéed onion. Really, really delicious. Some shredded lettuce at the bottom. A little more burger sauce down there. And that's the smash burger. That is the best dang burger you're going to get. Uh, I guarantee it. Um, burger sauce is not sauce. So it's not sus. So, so what burger sauce is, is if on a normal burger you were going to put uh, ketchup, mayo, mustard, you know, whatever. You're, you're basically just kind of making your own blend of those types of condiments ahead of time so that you don't have to like do the ketchup, do the mustard, do the mayo. You have one like pre-blended condiment that you and then you're ready to go. It just makes production faster. Um, and you know, when, uh, when, like when I do smash burgers, because it's, it is kind of a production, 
I like to have a bunch of people over, so I end up needing to have a little bit of a like an assembly line going. Um, but yeah, special, I mean, special sauce, if you really break down what it is, is like ketchup and mayonnaise with like a little bit of, of like mustard or something in it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so this, this is, uh, this is the way that I have made the smash burgers. There's uh, the preparation stuff is, is specific. Uh, I don't know if anybody cares about that, so I won't talk about it unless you ask, but here's what I want to do today. I want to be able to show this smash burger here. And then I want that to expand like this. So I want to have that animation that like of, of being able to explode the, the burger. I think that's uh, that's going to be really interesting, um, and I think it'll look fun. And, and honestly, I just like saw an excuse. Uh, and and the the history here is that um, Sarah Drasner very foolishly challenged me to a uh, burger cook-off. Um, and as you can see by this diagram, she is doomed, doomed. And we're gonna we're gonna destroy her. But uh, but so as part of part of this, I'm I'm basically. Uh, gonna just try to document the whole process so it's gonna be very it's gonna be fun we're gonna have a good time um but so anyways so so this is kind of me uh thinking about how do you how do you visualize something like this in a way that's not like okay i don't want to go to a page and this is all i can see right like the first thing i want to see is a burger and then if i want to like see how that burger is made i want to be able to like, click on it and see these pieces kind of explode and so the way that this is um set up is each of these things is its own layer so if i go in here and grab it like i can move it around if well maybe i can nope this piece oh my goodness um oh may oh it's because it's i'm not in the i'm not in the detached instance let me just detach it here okay so now that i'm in here i can i can move this around right so it's uh each of these is kind of an independent component of the burger and that gives me uh, gives me the ability to uh, you know play, and so we can do a lot of really cool stuff here. And I'm I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to export this, and we're just going to find out what it does in the as an SVG. So I've labeled all my layers, and so my hope is my my hope of hopes is that what's going to happen here is that each of these is going to come out with something somewhat identifiable as a as a layer otherwise i'm going to have to do some unfortunate things to get this to work but we're going to we're just going to try it we're going to see what happens um so let's let's go in and we're going to do this in code pen because code pen is fun um let me go here and create a new pen and then in here i'm going to take Let's see, I guess I need to start on, what's the, where's my, here's my code editor. Um, don't save. How do I, you know what, this is fine. We're going to pull this over and I'm going to put this smash burger in here. Ooh, that is not helpful. Okay, so here's what we're going to have to do. I'm going to have to copy paste this whole thing into here and that will give me a burger. Okay, so then the next thing that I need to do is I need to go in here and figure out which which of these is which thing. So um, so the the thing that I learned how to do that makes me happy is you you set up this defs block, and inside of the defs block you can identify different uh, different burger. I realize I should have left this other one open. So let me go find that. Uh, it was on like page four or something. Do, do, do here we go still going um one more there it is all right so uh so in here if i look at my svgs i have uh my defs and then inside of each def you create a group and you give it an id so i'm going to start by saying i've got a group and the id is going to be top bun not to be confused with the popular movie from the 80s. Um, then I got to figure out which one of these is the top bun. So I can kind of figure that out by colors, right? So if I go in here and I look at my colors, I can go and look for this one. 
Uh, nope, in here. And now I've got this that looks an awful lot like a top bun. Let me verify that by commenting it out. That's the bottom bun. Hooray! We got a... We got a... We're making progress here. So let's get uh, the bottom bun. I'm just going to add some classes so that I can figure out which one of these things is which. Uh, let's get this stroke here. Um, this one. And that is the bottom bun stroke. Can everybody see what's happening? Do you want me to make this bigger? Oh, buddy. You see that blow up? How do I wait? How do I make that change? Um, let's let's do it with. How about we do it with this? SVG with 100%. Height auto. There it is. Okay. So uh, this this will give us um, a full width burger. So we can make that a little bigger. We can see what's going on. So I've got my bottom bun, and then this one is the uh, bottom bun stroke. Uh, so then I can take these and let's uh, like let's just validate that that's actually the right one. Bun visible false animal style. <laughs> nice. Um, let's see. So this one then is going to be what? Maybe you are a burger sauce. That's the lettuce. See how fun this is? Um, so we've got our lettuce. And so once I get this all kind of put into place, I'm going to have to do a um, some organization to make this a little easier to read. But it's it's all this this starts slow. I promise it'll get faster once I once I have this organized a little bit. Okay, so that's our lettuce stroke. So I'm starting to see a pattern here in the way that this uh, that this built. So let's do lettuce stroke. Uh, then I can come down here, and I have a feeling this one is going to be the burger sauce. Nope, it's the red onions. Jeez. Okay, pattern. My pattern was absolutely incorrect. Um, or maverick. Uh, no low level condiments. Okay. Yes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, what was this one? I, oh, the onions. Um, so that's the onions. So then this I'm willing to bet will be the stroke for the onions. Let's find out. Yes. Okay. So that's the stroke for the onions. Okay, and then we're going to go down to this one, which is going to be something. What color are you? Are you the sauce? Did anybody see anything disappear just now? What was that? Hello? I legit have no idea what just happened. What, what thing was that? Is that a stroke for? Oh, it's the cheese stroke. Okay. Did I miss a thing? I did. That's what got me confused. Okay, so this one here is going to be the cheese. Bottom cheese. Bottom cheese, and then this one is bottom cheese stroke. This one sounds that it sounds like a joke, right? Bottom cheese. Um, okay. So, <laughs> damn it. I'm sorry. Um, so this one, then, what are you? I should have just started at the top, huh? So that's the bottom patty. And that means that you are probably the bottom stroke. That stroke is so subtle that it's basically not even important. And then this, I believe, is the highlight. Yep. Okay. 
So, um, bottom patty highlight. So how about this? Why don't we break this out into an actual def while we're here? So we'll start with bottom patty and then uh, up at the, then down in here, we can put this, this set in, right? And then what we can do is up here in the main SVG, I can use the, uh, that piece. So you see here, it's, uh, it's going to be use and then X lake href spatula. And I actually think that got simplified too. So I think now what I can do is use class bottom patty. and href uh, bottom patty. Nope, I did it wrong. Xlink href. Where have you gone? Use. Do I need to set a view box on this thing? I've got a view box. So where did you go just now? Because oh, I have to actually add the ID in it. Like the, the hash. Hey, look at it go. Okay, so there's our there's our patty back. And then I've got this this group. So what we'll be able to do is kind of collapse these out as they go. And we'll be able to build this out into our actual setup that we want. So that's our bottom sauce. Bottom sauce. And then this one is going to be our bottom sauce stroke, probably. Yep. Okay. This is definitely a, a little less exciting than uh, than a like a normal stream would be, I imagine. But it's going to be fun once we get this thing set up. So let's get bottom sauce, uh, and then we'll drop in the SVGs, and then up here we can duplicate this. And we'll pull in that ref and rename this and it's back okay so now we've got uh two components here and then we've got the bottom bun so we can pull that one out so let's grab this and we'll set another group up okay and then one more use all right here we go it's coming together so now we've got our lettuce so let's get a group set up for the lettuce let us set up the group <laughs> all right uh let's get this and there's the stroke so we'll pull that out and we'll drop it in here. Get our use block set up. And we can change this one to being just lettuce. Okay, so we've got our groups and we can collapse these on down. There's our lettuce, great. Uh, then we've got the onions, so we'll get the onion stroke. Okay. GID onion, onions. Okay. We're just making, making steady progress here. So, Drop that in. OK, 
Okay. Collapse this one down. Get this bottom cheese. Okay, so there's that. And let's collapse this group. And so you can see why I'm doing this is because these defs are kind of unwieldy, but this is actually pretty easy to look at. We can we can see what's happening and I can reason about this. Like I know, okay, this is like the patty, the sauce, and, and we can see the order that things go in. So like this patty goes in the back and then we want the, the sauce to be on top of the patty. We want the bun to be on top of the sauce, the lettuce on top of the, the sauce, so like the sauce and the patty, the onions on top of the, the patty cheese on top of that. So we're we're kind of building up the layers so that things show up in the proper order because if I move this around for example, like if I move the cheese over here, then it'll it'll fall behind everything. Um oh wait, not if I do it like that. I got to do it in the the use. So if I take the the cheese and I move it here, it disappears behind everything, right? So we we need to make sure that our order is correct. But this is what's nice about it is it starts at the bottom and it moves up. So we're just kind of building up the, anim the the SVG as we go. And it'll make it way easier to reason about than trying to scroll through this mess and figuring out what we're doing. So this is that uh, that work that, you know, it's you're cleaning, you're cleaning the environment. This is kind of the if you were if you were cooking, you call it the mise en place. This is the the work that is not super fun to do, but it is sure nice to have it done. Um, so this will be that is our top patty. Okay, and then this one's going to be our top, oops, I'm not going to hide these now that I know the pattern. So let's do the top patty stroke, and then this is going to be the top patty highlight. All right, so these three are going to come with me, and there it goes. Now I can set up the, the group for top patty. And collapse that down. We'll get that thing set up. Top patty. Okay. All right. We're getting close. We got like one, two, three, four more things to do. So this one then is going to be the cheese, I think. It is. So this is our top cheese. This is top cheese stroke. And I'm going to pull both of these out into a group. Wait a minute. Why are there two? Yeah, that's the stroke. Okay, figure out what that other one is in a minute. Top cheese. Collapse that down and then we'll go up here. This is where I really wish I had like multi-select. I don't think it works in CodePen. Um, oh, and then when you save it expands everything again. Stop it. Leave me alone. Top patty, top cheese. Okay. Uh, so this one, I don't know what you are, so let's find out. This has got to be the pickles. Look how complicated this path is. Okay, so that's the pickles color. So we'll just call this one pickles. And then we need the next one down is going to be the pickle stroke. So then if I take both of these, if I can find the end of it, maybe, let's see here. That's a complicated path. 
Holy crap. That's what you get for crinkle cutting, right? Um, okay, so then we've got our pickles. All right. And I need to get up in here. Wait, did I do this wrong? Why isn't that one collapsed? I screwed something up. Okay, hold on. There's the path. Here's the other path. We get to the end of our defs and why don't you work? What is going on? What is, what is the, what's the disconnect? What doesn't it like? Oh, that's, if I just save, does that fix it? That's annoying. Help me. Pickles. Can't collapse. But why? That's so confusing. Maybe it's just too long. And CodePen's like, nah, we don't want to deal with that. Because then down here, it does a weird wrap. And then it pretends that it can't understand that. But it definitely can understand that. So good, good. That's, I mean, does it, does it work if I use it? Pickles, use the pickles. I don't know, it works. Don't understand it. Uh, I guess that's just what life is like for us now. So we'll ugh, scroll past this whole thing. Um, and here's what I'm going to do as a defense mechanism. I'm going to take the rest of this out of here. I'm going to move it up above the defs so that we can not have to scroll past this giant path every time. So we'll put all these down here and then we'll just move them out one by one. So like, for example, we know, I know, these are our sesame seeds, right? So if I take all of these and the even odd and this path here, that's the top bun. Top bun. Okay, so then I'm going to put the group here because apparently I can do that. Uh, top bun. And I'm going to drop this in there. And we're going to close that group. And then this group is going to let me collapse. It sure is. And then I can come up here. And we know that the top bun goes at the top, which is in SVG land, the bottom. Huh? Some exciting stuff, right? And then uh, this one here is going to be, I think, our sauce. There's the sauce. Okay. So one more, one more use, and we're ready to rock and roll on this. And I will put that. Let's see, top sauce, and this one will be top sauce. And we have now effectively created our burger in a way that lets us do what we need to do here. We've got the, the setup here, and I can collapse these defs entirely. And now we don't have to think about defs anymore. Hooray! We have, uh, we have something that is much easier to access here. Um, so let's see if we can animate this thing. Um, and so we, and we could do like, it, it is possible um, with this. Like if I, let's make this say 300 pixels, uh, I could do something like, I don't know, let's do bottom patty. I'm gonna have to go change my class names cause I put them in the groups, didn't I? Um, and we can say like transform and we would say uh, translate X and we'll move it like 20 pixels. Right, and so it, it bounces and we can see here why I have to go change my, um, let's just add like a, can I, 
I can multi-select. So what we're going to do is just add a suffix on all of these so that I don't have to go edit those groups again. And we're just going to say path because that's, that's the way things are going to go here. Um, but so here's what's exciting is now that we've got that, we can, like, we could just go in and do all of this with CSS. But what I'd prefer to do if I can is try to make this something where we can use GSAP to grab this stuff and do some some kind of fun, more uh, professional feeling animation. So let's take out that part. And instead, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's get the body to display flex and we'll align items center justify content center is that going to do what i want oh we need to set the height to 100 vh there okay so vertically centered to div there we go um and then i can set a background on it which i like this uh this color that we were using so let's Actually, no, that's not the color I want to use. I want to use the one from this uh, this diagram here. So let's grab that color and we'll set our background color to be this one. OK, so now we have a, a burger of sorts, right? Like this is uh, this is set up. We're happy about it. I like the way that this is looking. It's it's feeling good. Um, and I want to make this animate. So let's get Let's get green green sake. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for GSAP. And it looks like GSAP is where we need it. Um, so then I'm going to save and close. And we're going to look at the docs. Because what I want to do, here's my thought. I want to change. How do I want to do this? I, I want to change the SVG to take each section and like move it up by a certain number, a certain distance from the layer below it. So I, I kind of want to like, if each one starts at a distance of zero, I want them to all expand to add like 30 pixels or so of, of distance between them. And we'll, we'll adjust what that distance actually is. And I kind of want that to like stagger a little bit. And we learned how to do that. Um, so let's see if we can figure out how to make this work. Uh, let's, let's just look through a little bit and see if there's anything that jumps out. So the from two, is uh, immediately interesting. I'm kind of wondering though if I can Let's see a tween's probably not it. Maybe it's a maybe it's a timeline. I know there's a bunch of things that uh, that I'm. This is the kind of stuff that I only like sort of know how this stuff works. Let's not do a let's not do a timeline to start. Let's start with a tween because that at least I sort of know. So let's get a tween and let's start by having it do um how do you do like the from two? Do I even need yeah, so let's do a two. And so what I want is I want all the things inside of the box. So can I get all of the contents? Get by ID. There is a way to do this. Um, get property, get by ID. Okay, I might have to uh, might have to jump back to what we built with Cassie uh, because she's better at this than I am, and we're gonna we're gonna learn from somebody who knows what they're doing instead of me trying to just jumping on things. So let's see, liquid masking is fine. Uh, 
animation learning is that one that I did this one so here's the masking yeah and we can so this is some stuff that that we did here so how does this all work we get gsap from and then we select dot rectangles and then oh look at, okay so check this out so so i think what we're going to do is instead of selecting like the outer svg we'll give all of the layers that we want to move a shared class and then yeah i yeah nikki i think you're right that i'm going to be using like gsap to or gsap from um but so i think what i can do here is all right so let's do this let's go in and look at our html again and so what i'm going to do instead of this well i guess i can do it in addition to i'm going to call this burger layer right so that's a or i guess we can call it something like ingredient so this is a, a burger ingredient now each one of these has an ingredient or each each of these ingredients is something that we want to animate so then i think what i do is i do gsap 2 and i get burger ingredient and let's just try a setting of some sort um i'm gonna try y percent 100 yeah why don't we try that maybe wobble y percent x percent okay so i'm going to y percent 20 oh look things are happening okay so this is not not what we wanted Oh, so they all move in weird ways. Okay, so I need to look at what the the options are here because this is not it's but it is like we're in we're in the right direction here. If I start moving these around, they'll all start bouncing around in weird ways. But what's happening right now is it's based on the individual ingredients height. So we're going to have to do something that's not a percentage because we want it to be uh uniform and I need it to like loop through and do a uh like, I guess I want the middle layer to stay put and then layers below that to go down and layers above that to go up, which might require some trickery that I'm not uh, equipped to do. We'll, we'll figure it out, right? Um, so here's GSAP.2. And we are going to see what our options are. If, if and we can find them. Uh, let's see. So parameters special properties There's a bunch of stuff that I don't think is what we need I need like X okay so we can just do an X Ooh, you get an index okay all right all right all right so target and targets this is what we need so I want this okay so let's get y is going to be a function and everything exploded you can see that the the one in the middle did not um and so i think what i need is let's start let's start uh console logging right when in doubt log everything to the console and so let's let's do index target and targets and peek at our console here. Tar is not defined. Go get out of here. Don't pretend like you don't know what a target is. Console. What are you? What? No. Are you done? Where is it getting tar from? Am I missing a closing bracket or something? Why does it, why are you like this?
They should end in place from where you set it. So I, I what I think I ultimately need is a toggle, but I'm trying to at this point I would settle for does what is okay. How do I get you to stop doing whatever it is you're doing? I think I need to turn off like evaluate on save. So let's try this again. Code pen, code pen. Okay, so let me just save that snippet and let's go to a new tab. And we're just gonna try this one again, I think. Let's open it over here. And I'm going to turn off the piece that, uh, that auto reloads because that seems to be what's going on. So save automatically, great, auto updating preview, no. I'm gonna use the run button because that seems, that seems like what we need if it's going to catch itself in um, more issues like that. So I want to have to run to get this to, to function. And so then by having done this, I can go to my console. Let's run it. Got to use the browser console instead. That's fine. So there's... Our index and then we get one target and then we get a list of targets and there are 11 targets so I think what we want to do is we want to figure out what the center is um, so the center of 11 is gonna be what six because I need a five on either side yeah all right so I could probably write some fancy math to make that work I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna know so uh, we know that we've got 11 layers on our burger. So what I'm going to say is let's do uh, distance is going to be index minus 6 times, wait, how do I want to do that? 20? 20, 20 pixels? That seems okay. Uh, so then we're going to return that distance. And I'm going to log that distance to make sure that I'm not doing bad math. I did bad math. Uh, so let's close that, open this. And our distance now is minus 110, minus 111, minus 100, what? Why? Okay. Is it a, does it think it's a string? What's happening? So let's close this up. Let's look at it again. Um, maybe I need to do like parse int. Oh wait, because it's going to start at zero. So that would be different. Let's run that. Why are they all why are they all doing that? Let me pop this out so that we can not have to play that game every time. Let's uh, we'll keep this over here. I'm very confused by this. Okay, so I'm doing something wrong, but let's uh, let's see if we can figure this out. So we're gonna log the index again oh yeah yeah duh order of operations in math okay let's run that again <laughs> okay so it got uh, it got kind of there let's try it the other direction ah look at it go okay so this is exciting so let's uh let's let's see if we can get this do the thing okay that's good 
So then what I need to do is I need to figure out how to get it to not disappear when uh, we expand it, which means that I need my, oh, I need my canvas to be wider. Oh, crap. Because my view box in here is going to be set to like, what happens if I just make this three times taller? Let's just make it 500 and see what happens. Does that blow up everything? It doesn't. It just works. Kind of. Ooh, kind of. Oh, shoot. Because of the way the layering works here, we're going to have to do custom ordering somehow. I wonder, I wonder if I can do... Oh, I wonder if I get like the target, if the target will give me um, the actual index. Maybe I can put like a data element on it. So let's see if that works. Because then I can just manually order them, which like I wouldn't recommend for a lot of cases, but target and then that'll give me all the HTML properties. Okay, so let's do that. Um, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but we can uh, we can do it. So this will be the way that we order things. Um, let's get our okay. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And we'll give this data ingredient order, right? And then each of those is going to get a number. And then I have to order these from like one to, or from zero to eleven. And so if I turn off this part, let's just let's just get that out of there for a second so that I can look at these. So zero is gonna be this bun. So bottom bun is zero. Okay, and then bottom sauce is one lettuce is two. Oh wait, I did this all wrong. So bottom bun is zero. Lettuce is two. Bottom patty is three. Oh, this is gonna be wild. Okay, uh, onions are four. Cheese is five. Top patty is six. Top cheese is seven. Pickles are eight. Sauce is nine. Oh. And top bun is 10. Okay, so now instead of instead of using the index, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get um, the uh, order is gonna be target get attribute wait what's that it's a uh, document get element by id or we'll get query selector and then we'll get like the body and we'll do get attribute get attribute um and so the attribute i think is the data attribute without the without the data dash, right? So if I go to uh, ingredient order, wait, I'm doing this wrong. Using data attributes, that's what I want. So uh, to do that, I should be able to get data set. Okay, I knew there was a way to do this. All right, so um so I'm going to do target data set and ingredient order. 
and that I need to parse int because we passed it as a string. Um, so then I can take the order and that means I can not worry about that one and I don't need the full list of targets. So we're just going to get that one and then I can run this again and it should do what I want. Do what I want. Do it. Oh, look at it go. Okay. All right. This is great. So this is exactly what I wanted. Let me, uh, let me make this a little bit smaller so we can actually see it happen. So let me save. Ah, behold my bucket. <laughs> Let's run it. We should get a smaller burger and it expands. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. This is great. This is exactly what I wanted. Um, so now we have the exploding burger. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to make this toggle on click. So I need to figure out how to like reverse it. And so if I, if I'm running this, can I just put my thing down, flip it and reverse it? Like, I think you can, right? You can just like dot reverse on reverse complete. Okay. Dot repeat dot reversed yes so that's what I want hmm this seems like it might I think there's probably a more efficient way to do what I'm about to do but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a function uh, called toggle burger explode and inside of it We'll call this. Um, and then what I want to do is have, like, if I do reversed true, actually, we wouldn't even need to do that. Okay, so how would I do this? We can set, like, a let open equals false, right? And then what we can do is uh, let's get the burger equals document dot query selector SVG and we'll do a burger add event listener uh, click and in that we will call toggle burger explode and let's just pass in the open status so we can get open and will default to false. Um, so maybe what I can do here is change it like that. And then we will use open and then we'll just invert it. This is, that's, that's a little messy, but it'll do. Um, so let's see if we can make this work. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. Okay, so I'm not quite right there. Um, let's see. What did I do wrong? Let's, well, actually, let's try this. Well, no, that doesn't seem right. So the first time I ran it, it was open. And now when I click, it doesn't do anything. So what I should probably do then is console log open and then let's console log it again down here to make sure that it's doing what I think it's doing. So then it's, yeah, it says it should be reverse true. So when I click again, it's not actually saving that value. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I know why. It's because, okay, if I'm gonna use this, then I need to just not, if I'm gonna do globals, I gotta do globals or else I'm in for a bad time. So this should now work. Nope, well, it, it did, but the reverse didn't work. So it is toggling, false, true, true, false, right? So it's doing, it's doing the right thing from a logical thing, but this isn't actually doing what I want, which means I'm holding it wrong. So, um, if true, animation will start with the playhead reversed. 
a reversed tween will appear paused. Run backwards is true. Okay, oh, oh, it needs to be re uh, run backwards instead of maybe? Let's try. Run backwards. Is that plural? Run backwards. All right, let's save it. Let's run it. Gotcha. No. Okay. So it is like open is set correctly and it is toggling. So when I click. So what if I just like set this to true? What happens? Like, will it just explode for me? Okay, so it does work if we set that correctly. So why are you... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Um, GSAP doesn't work that way. GSAP returns a tween. So what I should actually do is I should set this paused. Yes. So what I should do instead is I should um, actually store this output, right? And then what I'm going to do instead of running backwards is I'm going to set paused to true. And then when you, what we'll do is we'll say if, I got, well, yeah, if open, we're going to animate play and otherwise we'll animate reverse, I think, and then we're going to toggle it. Let me make sure those things are real things. So if we look at the tween, we have reverse. Yeah. Okay. So let's give this a try and let's see if it works. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. Okay. So it's paused. I click and it opens. I click and it fails because I spelled it wrong. Okay. This one's going to work. I can feel it. <clears throat> Thank you for catching the typo before I did. Hey, look what we've done, chat! Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, so now I want to play with this a little bit more because there's some cool things that we can do. Um, I want to see if this, uh, this stagger thing works. So I believe I can just run this in and I think it'll just work. Let's try it and see what happens. Thank you for the sub, Luke. Okay, let's run it again. Oh, that's chaos, that's terrible. So we don't want that. We want, how does stagger work? Let's find stagger. Holy buckets, did that just work? Staggers. Okay, so what I want to happen See, you see how cool that looks? Uh, from center. Edges is probably what we want. That seems right. So let's go from edges. Save it. We'll run it. Hmm. Fine. I don't know. I kind of liked it better when it was... Uh, let's see. Can we make API details so we can do a stagger 0.1 seconds between each? That seems like that's probably the right idea. Is it what's the default? 0.1. Kind of like the 0.1. Let's do what was the actual thing called? Stagger each 0.1. What's amount do? Is that a thing? Amount. The total number of time they get split among the staggers. Oh, how about I don't do that? And instead we just do the point one. Pew. Nope, that's so much worse. Um, let's do a shorter one, like amount point five. 
Does that make you work better? Sandwich chefs. I'd like to be a sandwich chef. That's really my exit plan, right? When I when I fully give up, that's what's going to end up happening. Is I'm I'm just going to join. I'm going to start a food truck. That's where I'm headed. Okay, let's make this faster, 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 faster. I feel like it looks. That looks pretty good. I don't I don't mind that at all. I'm not mad at it. Let's uh let's make the duration a little shorter. I think a half second is plenty. So let's run it again. This is where I'm like, when I'm using APIs like this, this is when I get excited about uh, TypeScript because I really want it to tell me how stuff works. I also don't like, is there an index that I want it to start from? Maybe I want it to start from this is my easing doing something weird? Like that seems weird, right? Like it shouldn't be. Oh, I know what it is. Okay. I know why this is weird. It's because it's not using the order I set. It's using, watch the lettuce and the bottom burger. They, they swap places for a second. You see that? It's because it's not using the right order, which means I need to either choose to, can I set this differently? Like index target link. Yes, so I can, I can do exactly that by getting the same information again. So let's do it this way. And we will yet again, grab this detail. And we will for this one, we want to make the delay the same on the edges, which means we need to do um, like w one. How would this work? We want so if we have like at the edges, we want zero, and at the center we want a delay of like a quarter second. So we need to split that difference and get like a percentage for each one with five being zero and any other amount getting like absolute change to be a percentage of one. So if, uh, so how would that work? So if like zero minus five, and then we do the absolute value So we go like math.absolute um, would give us five. And then we would divide that by five and that would give us one, right? Uh, and then the same thing would be true. I should probably make this a comment so that it's more clear what what is happening here. So then if I did the same thing with 10, I would get one. And if I did that with like a, let's say a three, three minus five is negative two divided by five would be 0.6, right? I should do this in a console where I can actually check my work. Let's, uh, let's do that. So math dot absolute of zero minus five divided by five is one math dot absolute of 10 minus five is one three is point four. 2.6. Okay. Uh, let's do eight. Okay. So that's what we want. So we want that. That's going to be how we do our distance is going to be math absolute. Um, so we can return math dot abs of order minus five divided by five uh, times point two, I think, because that's 0.2 seconds is the longest 0.25 seconds. Let's do that. So let's save. And let's 
run it. And does that do what we want? Oh, but I did math.absolute. So I need to do like one minus because I want it to go the other way. That delay is weird. Okay. How? Hmm. Why is that slow? What do you think? Let's get the value that I'm creating. So the const. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So what I'm doing right now, it, I think it's using linear easing or whatever the default is. Um, there is no pink cabbage on this burger, I beg your pardon. Um, what, uh, what am I doing? I want to console log the value that we're creating here. And I think what I'm doing is I'm actually creating like a a one second delay at the center or at the edges when it's absolute. So let's try that again and let's just observe what I'm doing wrong because I think I have a hunch. Yeah, look at that. So, so the way that I'm doing this right now, the center delay is one and the outer delays are like 0.75. So what I actually want to do is I want to get it to the point where the center delay is 0.25. So I should be 0.5. 25. No, 25. Oh, mm. <laughs> okay. So if you want zero and your maximum value is 0.25, you subtract from 0.25. That's still incorrect. No, that's right. Cool. That's fun. Okay. So how are we doing on time here? We're basically out of time, aren't we? Um, what time is this actually scheduled to end? I've completely lost track of everything today. Let's pull this one up. And we've got 15 minutes left. So in 15 minutes, can I figure out how to take this? Because here's the next piece that I want. I want a little bit more life in this, right? Because right now it's it's cool. I'm happy. But what I don't... Those outer 0.75 delays. That's a good question. So... I mean, the, the short answer is I just don't know. Um... Well, the, oh, this math is just wrong anyways, because I didn't duplicate the value over. So let's try that again and see what happens. So it starts at 0.15, and then we get weird values. Zero. That's interesting that it's doing that. Hmm. I don't know. It looks good enough that I don't care, I think. Or actually, you know what? These would be out of these would be out of order because uh the layers are out of order. Remember, like this one is not actually the bottom layer, it's like this one is the bottom layer. So this is just it's cycling through the targets in index order, not in order order. So uh that that actually is correct. That doesn't confuse me anymore. Um so what that actually means is like these are the outside layers, and then these are the next ones, and then these are the next ones. Does that make sense? Or whatever, these are the next ones, and, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so it's just the, the indexes and the order don't match up, so this list is not in order. This list is in index order, not, uh, not order order. 
Um, okay, so that's good. We can we can make that work, and then I'm gonna clean up this console log so that we don't spam the console. And then, in our last ten minutes or so, I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit of like judder in this, because what what would be really cool is if it kind of looked like the burger was like falling into a pile, right? That would be that would be fun. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, and actually, to do that, what if I what would be the right way to do that? What if I like went to the that last one so that it was actually like a pile going up? No, that's not right. I don't want to. I'll I'll fig I don't have enough time to figure that out now. But what uh, what I'm thinking is like I'm wondering if maybe the way it should work is instead of the burger like starting in the middle and expanding, it should start at the bottom and like pop open. So it would kind of be like a like it would it would kind of explode upward in a, a fun way so I can make it look like I was sitting on a countertop or something. Um, but this is fine. I'm I'm happy enough with this that I think we can we can ship it. Uh, but I want to see if I can figure out how to. Oh, yeah, we could do a little we could do a little easing on this. That's probably a good call. Let's let's go play with easing. Ease, 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 eases. Because we've got some built-in ones. Um, probably not quite that much. No. What about like... I'm going to need to do custom and oh geez let's start with let's start with one like this none and then we'll go custom and then I can like drag out a value can I you're not going to let me add a point oh don't make me do don't make me edit paths I don't want to do that so this is zero one 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 one, one. ease sign out Okay, maybe I can just drag this. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Okay, so let's see if we can do it like that, where we, we kind of... Not quite that much. We want, it, we want it to be, like, over here. Eh. probably want the duration to be much lower. That'll probably make that look a lot less weird. Pew. That's fine. It's not great. This is not my finest work, but it's it's not it's better than nothing, right? Um, so let's take this one and we'll just copy that thing right in there. So we're Oh, don't make me Sure, I'll do that. Get this ease. Come out here. We're going to drop it in like so. Save it. Run it. And now you've got personality. Nope, screwed it up. Uh, Gsap.customies, I bet. Nope. Okay, so that's not going to work. So how about we do one that uh, that actually does work? Let's change it to... Um, <laughs> let's change it to bounce. That's not great, but it, it at least lets us do... Uh, yeah, we can do bounce.out. Great, we're going to do bounce.out. Save it. Let's try it. <laughs> it's so bad. Okay. Um, so <laughs> what happens if I want to go in and out? Like, then what happens? Let's go in out. It's weird, but it's also kind of fun. But what you know what I like about this? as opposed to having to rewrite all of my transitions in CSS, is that I can just come in here and poke around. 
and you know we can just try stuff and see what happens like that looks super weird that's like a that's like if you were shooting a cheeseburger in a horror movie and you wanted to make it look unsettlingly like like unnatural you want a burger that kind of gives you the heebie-jeebies that's the animation you would use um but i think what i can do here instead of bounce is like sign i think that'll look okay Yeah, that's fine. Look at that. Okay, so that's, you know what? That's clean. I'm I'm totally happy with that. That makes me feel like we've got a good setup. I'm going to make this even a little bit faster, I think, for the sake of, uh, you know, with that, that delay, I think it'll make it feel kind of nice. Nah, I take that back. It's too fast. Or maybe I just need to make it, like, a little closer. And this is where the tweaking comes in, right? You're going to spend a million years trying to make this work. I'm going to change it to like 0.4 seconds. And that's probably as much as I'm going to do on this today. We'll start tearing down after this. So um, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks fun. Like it's a, it's, it's cool. You can see a burger. You can expand the burger. The, the next steps would be to figure out how to get these um to like animate in or something but i'm probably going to do these differently because i don't want I'm not 100 percent sure how i want to manage this maybe maybe what i can do honestly is like make these into a uh an image or something or actually you know what if you do an svg you can make it screen reader accessible so i probably would do that but i might just honestly have this fade in behind it so that it's not like i'm not going to try to animate a bunch of arrows that seems like it seems like a bad time. Um, expand a burger. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think, I mean, this is fun. Like, I'm, I'm into this. I think this is a lot of fun. I, I do like it. I'm going to blow this out just a little bit more so that it does have room for those arrows without everything being crowded. Um, oh, this is fun. Okay. I love animations. I should do more. Oh my goodness. I thought that just exploded. Expando burger. Okay. So let's save that. Here's expando burger. If anybody wants to go check it out, you can go and play. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this would be super fun. Ooh, what do we got here? We've got be cool. If you could check in various ingredients on and off, that would be cool. That would be really cool. I think the that would require like here I've hard coded my my center layer, so we'd have to figure out how many layers existed and get the the middle, um, and recalculate based off that. So there's a few there's like some refactors that would need to be done, but after that, you know, because of the way these SVGs work, because we've got this this use, it would be a little bit of a pain in plain JavaScript, but if you were using any sort of templating language, uh, whether that's, you know, 11 D or react view, whatever, then you could do like a, a logical check. So if somebody checked a box, you could just say, if the box for, you know, a bun is checked or, you know, or the, the box for sauce is checked, show this use. Cause the number of, uh, so if I get rid of this, for example, um, the sauce will disappear. Oh, that's right. I have to run it now. So the sauce has disappeared. So we'd have to figure out how do you um, adjust height. So we'd need some kind of tracking of like what the height of the thing was so that we could kind of collapse everything down. Um, but yeah, that would be lots of lots of fun ideas with that and in ways that you could do that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, a lot of ways that we could take this and play. But uh, thank you all so much for hanging out um yeah i'm uh i'm real i'm real excited about this i think this is going to be fun i think we're going to go troll the heck out of sarah drasner um make sure if you if you see her around twitter remind her that i am the best at burgers and she's going to be so sad that she ever challenged me sorry sarah i don't make the rules but uh cool all right so uh make sure you head back to the homepage of learn with jason we've had live captioning all this session and every episode we've had uh, we've had Diane with us today from White Coat Captioning. That is made possible by our sponsors Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura. You can head out 
to the uh, to the homepage there and check out those sponsors. Check out the live captioning, and also while you're there, check out the schedule. We've got some really fun stuff coming up. Uh, we have Ben Myers coming on on Thursday. We're going to learn about how screen readers are affected by CSS, which honestly I would have thought that they weren't. So I'm really interested in this episode. We've got uh, Sarah Diane coming on to teach us about JavaScript autocomplete. That's an Algolian open source project. Uh, we've got Brian Douglas coming back to teach us, teach us about GitHub Actions and Fork PRs. Uh, we're going to learn about Flutterflow, which I don't know anything about Flutter or Fire. Well, I know a little bit about Firebase, thanks to David East, but uh, I don't know anything about Flutter. So we're going to learn how that works. We're going to learn about Blitz.js. We're going to learn about command line interfaces in Rust, uh, Strappy. We're going to do serverless functions in TypeScript. Like we've got so, so, so many good things. I've got a few more in my inbox right now that I need to add to the site. So make sure you uh, head over here, hit this add to calendar button so that you can get all of the latest episodes automatically added to your Google Calendar. With that, thank you all so much for hanging out today. I've had a blast. <laughs> we're going to end with a stampede, and then we're going to go find somebody to raid. Thank you all very much. We will see you next time.